many people think that indigenous peoples is something that you look like, but it's your whole being and your upbringing and your history and your traditions and everything is rooted in land. We have to find a way to incorporate our old traditions and our old knowledge with the new world that we live in today. Those connections to do those things in our culture, in our language, in our land. Our generation is left with the question of, okay, how do we do it? And how do we empower ourselves to really take things on for ourselves? Well, it's a lot about establishing and creating and fostering emerging leaders. How can we become unified? behind something to really drive progress forward. I'm attending this Indigenous Organizations Leadership Gathering. We're all Indigenous peoples to all our different lands from all over, from Alaska, Yukon, Denende, Nunavut, uh, all the way up to like Greenland and Scandinavia. We're meeting with other groups in Arctic regions that are doing similar work. And we are here to learn from each other. Create partnerships, offer support and inspiration. Figure out ways to collaborate together and ways that we can strengthen our work. So it's a great trading spot. Oh, there's people here who are working with students and some who are really working with young people and some who are focused on culture or science. But it's Indigenous people that are really interpreting what it means to be Indigenous in a very different working environment than what's ever existed before. The innate values of being stewards of the land and the sea and the sky These are principles that we share unanimously at this gathering, whether you're Inuit or Gwich'in or whichever community you're coming from. So we're seeing a lot of common themes and morals and challenges too. Things that I'm learning here will apply to my my work with the GNWT, it will apply to all of the things that we do with Den and Owl, and it'll apply to how I'm raising my kids and how I am with my family. I'm just learning how resilient we all are and how much strength that we draw from our culture and our land and each other. It's so inspiring. As we are sharing, you know, the initiatives that we're doing, people are saying, oh, I'm going to take that home and I'm going to try to apply it to our community, which I think was the purpose of this convening. It was really just trying to collaborate and share ideas so we can really move forward together. Coming here and entering into this safe space where you are allowed to heal as well is very important. As one of our colleagues said, it's so difficult to do soul work every day and it's tearing on you and you have to find the sources of energy and also having safe space of asking those difficult questions. It's important to have a, a network and a safety net and people who can have your back when you feel like you're falling. We're the same people and why is it that we it's taken us this long to get together and to have this knowledge exchange. I want to see it continue to happen. You know, Arctic peoples have lived here for thousands of years and we've been so resilient and creative and innovative and everything that you need, I think you already have within you and within your culture. It's just a matter of relearning it or remembering it and recovering it and then sharing it. I find it really important that we give our youth the chance to speak up and say what they actually feel and you know be a part of their culture and be a part of their land and their traditions and actually learn about you know what our ancestors did before us. With the change in economies, the change in the global state of affairs politically and even physically it's extremely important that our voice be added to help shape the future that uh, we're all going to be a part of. This holistic uh, knowledge about the lands and the oceans and our habitats combined with today's context of scientific research and distinct fields of Western science, policy and advocacy, and telling our stories from our hearts. I think that using all of the, our strengths and gifts that we have combined, we can make huge impacts moving forward, not just for ourselves and uh, the communities that are close to us, but for people all over the Arctic and all over the world. We're all doing the same thing, which is surrounding this idea of the future. And it's not one of going back to complete traditionalism, 
but it's about melding the best of both worlds and legitimizing our traditional way of life to Southerners and to the rest of the world. See, and what I dream about most is our children running around, playing on the riverbanks and speaking in our languages. Our young people having the option of learning to hunt, learning to build an igluvigak, learning the traditional tools, making traditional tools, clothing, and being confident in who they are. And those skills are recognized and celebrated um, as a community, yes. including the education. Seeing more natives in academia at the university level teaching those classes, so seeing indigenous instructors or, and indigenous leaders in our state. Uh, youth my age doing what I'm doing <laughs> and taking that place for me because Because you're going to get old. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will happen. People just have to stay persistent. It's up to us now to rebuild what we can, reclaim what we can, and learn what there is left. It's really beautiful, and I'm excited to see how we can work together and what we can make happen. We don't want to be the missing link between our past generation to this new one. One of my favorite sayings is, uh, if not you, then who? And if not now, then when?